All right, guys, congratulations. You both made it to round three of the competition where we will send you to your home forges for four days to make this iconic weapon from US military history. And that weapon is the Springfield 1905 bayonet. We will be providing a Springfield 1903 replica rifle to you. Your bayonets must fit snugly and securely on your rifle. Developed in the early 1900s, the M1905 Springfield bayonet was used by American infantry for nearly 70 years, from World War I through the Vietnam War. These versatile weapons were designed with a mechanical device in the pummel that attached securely to the rifle, while also featuring a comfortable handle, making it a very effective weapon in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Featuring a sharp single edge, a long fuller, and a false edge, this lightweight bayonet could quickly deliver stabs and slashes to an opponent. The bayonet is still used today during military ceremonies and can be seen in several classic war films like 1998's The Thin Red Line. All right, gentlemen, when you guys build your bayonets, I want you to follow these parameters. Your blade needs to be between 15 and 16 inches with a fuller and a false edge at the tip, as well as a muzzle ring guard. I'm a little nervous with it. I've never done a guard on a knife before, let alone with a keyhole. And I know with the bayonets, they usually have a place in the back of the handle where it locks into the rifle. There's a lot of first. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, good luck. We'll see you in four days. Good luck, man. My main plan is to get the whole blade forged out. I guess I could grind it to shape. But then it's not forged in fire. <laughs> I have everything forged out. Pullers are in. Rough dimensions are there. I'm happy. So right now, I have my groove cut. These are going to be the rest of my pummel, they are going to go like so, and then be welded like that. So I have to use my angle grinder very, very, very carefully and scribe this line in thick enough that it fits on those rails. Line everything up. Hey, hey, hey. it works. I got my scales all cut out. They fit relatively nice. Now I'm working on getting my pin but that's gonna look pretty cool when it's done. I have my knife all glued up. Now that it's dry, I'm ready to take the clamps off. Now we'll start profiling the handle. At the end process, it's probably one of the best things I've made. I'm pretty proud of this. So I'm back in Lancaster, Ohio at my home forge. I've never made anything this big before. All right, so I got the edges cleaned up fairly well. Overall, my knife is pretty straight. It's got some little wobbles in there, but that's from, from forging. A little less than an eighth of an inch to remove from this thing, and we're good. I'm going to punch my knife. There's a lot of things that can go wrong in this process. Let's do this. So I'm not hearing any weird noises or any pings, so uh, I think I'm in good shape. The biggest challenge of this build is getting that locking mechanism to work. So now we're going to test fit this. There she is. I try to really pride myself on my fit and finish, and I'm pretty confident in my knife. I'm really happy with it. I wouldn't want to be on the other end of this thing. Let's see what it does. Yeah. This thing is sweet. Let's see. <laughs> this thing is sharp. Dude, that didn't even make any noise. It just stabbed right through it. Blade spits, welcome to the kill test. The first mission today is to take your bayonet and affix it to the Springfield rifle and deliver some killing blows on this ballistics dummy. Then I will dismantle the blade from the rifle and let's see what kind of lethal damage it will do on its own. Josh, you're up first. You ready? As ready as I can be. All right, Josh, let's talk about your bayonet here. When I affixed this onto the rifle, it had a very nice match with the railing in there and your pin. It was very secure. Now, your edge is very sharp. It definitely lacerates deep into the bone. On its own, the handle construction matches nicely on my hand. Overall, sir, you look heel. Awesome, thank you. All right, Brad, your turn. So you ready for this? 
Let's go for it. All right, Brad, first up, the handle construction. It is a little bit on the smaller side, but there are no sharp edges. And the flare you have here actually gives me good retention and I can get all the way to the guard. At first, I was a little bit worried about your cutter pin right here. It looked flimsy, but the minute I put it on, it wasn't an issue at all. It stayed affixed to the bayonet quite tightly. Your weapon is straight. Every cut was very deep into this ballistics dummy. Overall, sir, your weapon will kill. Thank you, sir. Blitzmiths, welcome to the strength test. The steel can stab and barricade chop. This test is all about what happens to your bayonets and not what happens to the targets. Josh, you're up first, you ready? Nope. No. <clears throat> well, here's my finish. Josh, well, you survived really well. There is sections on here that are now not as sharp as they were, but nothing rolled over, nothing chipped out. I mean, your point is still nice and sharp. It performed really well in the strength test. Nice job. Awesome, thank you. All right, Brad, be ready for this. Well, my nan said don't break it, but go for it. Oh, Brad, what you got here, your blade edge took some damage. The blade's taken a bit of a bend to one side here. It's cheating to the right. But your point didn't take any damage. It's all in one piece. It's a nice, sturdy blade. Nice job. Thank you. All right, Bladesmiths, this is the sharpest test, the military bag slice. To find out how sharp your edges and point of your bayonets are, I'm going to take a stab at these military bags. Josh, you're up first. You ready? Let's go for it. All right, Josh, your bayonet right here had no problems puncturing the bag and slicing it to pieces. You'll cut. Sweet, thanks. All right, Brad, your turn, sir. Shall we do it? Of course. Have at you. <laughs> pew, pew, pew. <laughs> All right, Brad, let's talk about your blade here. Wicked sharp. It punctured easily in the military bag. At the same time, the edges cut like hot steel on butter. But overall, sir, for this test, you will cut. Thank you, sir. A gentleman, well, you both brought us amazing work. Only one of you will go home with the title. And the Forge and Fire champion is... Josh. Holy Congratulations. <laughs> Brad, unfortunately, you're not going home with the win today, and Doug's going to tell you why. I commend you on your work. Your knife performed very well on our test, but it was also the only knife that took a bend on the strength test. And for that reason, your blade did not make the cut. Brad, unfortunately, that means I'm going to have to ask you to please leave the Forge 4. I understand. Have a good one, guys. Pleasure, man. Thank you. When it comes to the judge's final decision, I can't argue with it at all. I am extremely proud of my work. That was probably the best blade I've ever made so far. This has just been a dream come true, and I'm just so grateful to be where I am right now, even if I am going home. Well, Josh, that means you are the Forge and Fire champion, and you're going home with a check for $10,000. How does it feel, bud? I feel awesome. Congratulations. I don't even know, man. <laughs> I'm still trying to sink in that I, I won this, this. I won. It's a little overwhelming. <laughs> I can't wait to tell my wife. She had a lot of confidence in me from the very start. I'm excited to let her know that, hey, you, you were right, you know? I won. 